caminando Voy pensando, voy pensando Caminando, caminando Voy sintiendo, voy sintiendo Es el amor lo que nos une Es el amor lo que comparte Es yuca del monte. ¿Para qué la sembra? Pues es... Persona que le han metido, como dicen, el remedio, la pusangre, ¿no? Le han, este. Un, esa chica, su, la menor que está ahí, donde está conversando, con este le he curado. Pues, un solo baño, fue. Pues. Le llegó a aborrecer al pata. Esta es la ayahuasca. Ahí. Esta era de sus plantas purecitas. No le conocían las macheteo. consultarles sobre, por ejemplo, el tema de, de la medicina tradicional, especialmente de la ayahuasca, ¿no? Ajá. Bueno. Por, por ayahuasca sí puede decir cosas. ¿Por qué cree que usted que las enfermedades aparecen? Por descuido ¿O por, qué, ¿Por qué crees que aparecerían las enfermedades? ¿O ¿Por qué se dan realmente las enfermedades? <risa> ¿Por, qué? ¿Por qué así, eh? Porque todo lado así. Poco de gente ir en hospitales. ¿eh? Ah, la pues, gente, o sea, por ejemplo, la gente recurre muy poco acá, lo que es la cuestión. Sí, de acá que la local gente no, no toma ayahuasca. ¿eh? No toma. No. no. Ay, Mayormente ay. turistas vienen aquí. Ayahuasca Ay, es de una planta como soga, ¿no? Es soga. O sea, el nombre no como. Ayahuasca. ayahuasca. Es eh, de capi, llama capi. Capi. Eh, claro. Eso es soga y otra planta llama chacruna. De ojitos de una uh, planta también. Yeah. Los dos cocinamos con agua, por ejemplo, 20 kilos de, de capi, de uh -huh. soga, por ejemplo, 2 kilos de chacuna. Eh, ¿Qué síntomas o qué, o qué males cura con eso? Ah, que Diego, don Ignacio dice que 70% de enfermedades puede curar con ayahuasca. 70%. 70%. Sí. Más o menos. Él, él dice, tiene... pero ¿cuál enfermedad puede curar? Eh, yo no puedo decir, pero para mí, con mi experiencia, uh -huh. muchas cosas uh, de mentales, problemas mentales, puede curar con la ayahuasca. Para todas las enfermedades hay una solución, seguro. Hay no solamente uno, hay muchos diferentes, ¿no? con uh -huh. energías, con las plantas con otros también, Ay, pero hay que saber, ¿no? También yo es, escucho gente dice que diabetes y cáncer también puede, puede curar, pero en co caso de drogadicto ya puede curar seguramente. En seis meses hay que tomar la, dos veces a semana. Dos veces por semana. No, ¿no? Cualquier persona no puede tomar ayahuasca. ¿El tratamiento cómo se ve? Por ejemplo, yo digamos que... Tienes que dietar, quiero... por ejemplo. ¿Cómo hacemos aquí? La almorzamos, pero no cenas. Porque cuando toma ayahuasca necesita de barriga vacía, sí, mm. para que aprovechar más ¿no? ¿Qué la planta. Efecto? ¿Qué efecto Ajá. produce? ¿Cómo? ¿Qué efecto produce al ingerir, al tomar? Yeah. Ayahuasca. Uh -huh. Ayahuasca, <coughs> eh, ¿cómo dice? Este soga es, ¿cómo se llama? Mao inhibitor. En la chacruna, de hojas de chacruna, dimetiltriptamin. Es, eh, este soga, de Mao inhibitor, hacer eh, de bloquear la estómica para que no me lograr de, de este dimetiltriptamin. ¿Qué hace dimetiltriptamin? Es eh, traer esas visiones ¿sí? para que mirar. También. Eso es alucígeno. Ajá. Es alucígeno. Esa planta es. Alucígeno. Uh -huh. 
Y de Mao en Hebe, de Rinde Soga, limpiar su cuerpo, como claro. vomitar y daería. De vomitar. ¿Alguna otra pregunta, chicos? ¿Tú quieres tomar? <risa> no. Quiere alucinar. Quiere alucinar. Quiere Quiere alucinar. Sí, puede tomar. No, no pasa nada. A ver, chicas. No, mira, ayahuasca no hace nada de mal, eh. Ayahuasca es, no es un droga. Chao, chao, Mari. Es un pollo sanito, pues, ¿no? Vamos. Mi chiamo Sergio, vengo da un paesello nella provincia di Bergamo, faccio l'elettricista e vorrei fare il musicista. E tutti ne ho sentito parlare, ma finché non, ha, non lo si è provato, che cosa serve parlare? Eh, ce l'hai paura? Un po' di paura. In verità ce l'avevo finché non sono arrivato qui in questo posto, poi ho capito che potevo fare a meno di aver paura. Qualcuno mi ha detto che non dovevo aspettarmi di avere chissà che allucinazioni visive o di, di vedere chissà che cosa. Qualcuno mi ha detto che mi avrebbe aperto delle percezioni corporee su, su quello che avrei sentito, sui canti, su quello che sente la pelle, su quello che... non so... percezioni sensoriali. Qualcun altro invece mi ha parlato di, di visioni, chiudendo gli occhi si presentavano dei ricordi, si presentavano dei visi, cose strane, cose diverse comunque. A me piace curiosare in queste esperienze perché cioè, cos'altro puoi trovare di diverso nelle esperienze, cioè, nelle esperienze quotidiane, non, è, non arrivi mai a raggiungere queste cose se non sognando, no? Quindi... La voglia è quella, non so. <ride> Mi stai lavando la spoglia. Già, sta. Completo. Su gusto sirva de carne. Servido para comer. Para almorzar. Ya, va, Ya. Ya, mira. Vamos a hacer el ritual esta noche. ¿Dónde? ¿Dónde? Vamos a hacer el ritual. ¿Esta noche? Mm. Bueno. Yo no sé en verdad lo que, lo que ¿Sí? se hace. ¿Primera vez, doctor? Primera vez. Ya. Yeah. No hace nada. Arroz y pollo. Arroz, y yuca. pollo, yuca, plátano. Pescado trae del pueblo. Pescado también. ¿Sí? ¿Para va a pescar? No, del pueblo, de, de compra, del mercado. Claro. Cuando voy al pueblo no fallo de tres meses. Dos pesos, así o tres. Yo no sufro de comida, así sufro con un día. Después, como me lo me fallo yo. No me gusta sufrir de la comida. Ah. 
Esta es más bien nieta. Hay algo que no puede comer. ¿Sí? Para tomar ayahuasca. ¿Por qué? No, ahorita puedes Cuando estás en dieta puedes comer sin sal, sí. Sin sal. Sin sal todo. Bueno, sí, no es tan malo sin sal. Sin ¿no? condimento, <risa> nada de cebolla, ajo, es no. Nada de eso. Pura así puedes comer sin Natural. sal. Natural. ¿Era su hijo el hombre que estaba acá esta mañana? Sí, mi hijo. Pero no, no quiere aprender para ser el jabal. No, no quiere. No quiere. Sí, María Lotto vive allá también. No, no quiere. Comprende si de las plantas tiene lo que me mira, que prepara. O sea, se interesa de las plantas. Conoce. Preparan remedio también los dos. ¿Preparo el medio? Sí, preparo. Bueno. Pero no quiere diventar un curandero. Y aguasquero. ¿A cuánta gente ha enseñado? ¿Cómo? ¿A cuánta gente ha enseñado para hacer ahí aguasco? Acá no. Hay un, un americano sí aprendió. ¿Un americano? Sí. Hay un... un ¿Cómo se llama? Un argentino. Es una... una duro para que aprenda. No, 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 no se concentra, no sabe qué cosa es dieta, nada. Ah. Toma y se va al pueblo, viene, se emborracha. Se... Otra es toma, otra se va. ¿Qué va? No. Mentiroso sí, se hace. Si hace, tomo si la ayahuasca, no hay nada que sé, pero no, no sabe nada. No entiendo. Con este jada la hierba, con este machetea. Cuando no tomo café, vivo triste. <risa> sí. Sin conocer, cúrale, me dice la señora. Que yo no sé curarte, señora. ¿Quién lo vas a saber si tomas ayahuasca? Pues me dice la señora. ¿no? Si yo sería millonario, me gustaría ayudar a la gente pobre gente que más necesita. Eh, a esos que hacen propaganda de la ayahuasca tampoco no les creo. Porque ellos te miran y estás viniendo y te miran que viene de frente y te quedan mirando y ya sabes cuánto tienes en tu bolsillo. 
es a esos precios que cobran, pues. Con, con maestro he tomado siete veces. Después de él me dijo, siete veces estás tomando, ya puedes tomar solito, me Y mi estrada conocía, pues, la ayahuasca. Un día me fui, traje una tarde. Y al otro día amaneció lloviendo, me puse a cocinar una ollita chica. Todo el día le hice hervir, pues. Sal, ¿Solito? Solito, salió exquisito. La... Parecía miel. La probé dulce, la pregunta. Está lloviendo. Le, le, le tomé un poquito. Muy bien, la borrachera. ¿Cuántos acá, años tenía? La borrachera, solito estaba, pues, ¿no? ¿Cuántos años tenía? 22. Ajá. Y de ahí. El gallinero, tenía mis gallinas, pues ya mis gallineritos. Le oigo gritando un poche, che, che, una víbora había dentro. Uh. Le maté a la víbora, vengo con muchas las, las culebras de crucero. Y ya mirando visiones, pues no, sí, porque se la habré matado a la otra. Y ya vine, me senté. Pucha, ya está. Me senté un ratito atrás de mi casa. ¡Ti! ¡Ti! que la borrachera se me venía potente, pues, solito. Pucha, ¿qué hago? Digo, cara, me cerré bien mi cuarto. Ahí estoy, pero no le aguanta cara. Me saqué mi ropa, una canaleta de pona, ahí mi cocina. Ahí me paré en la chorrera, o bañarme solito. Y si no, pues, seguro me hace correr el gran puta. ¿no? De ahí me senté ya, me cambié, me sequé, me, me senté en mi cama, estaba mirando. Me hablan, carajo. Valiente eres, ¿no? Me... Más fuerte sí. que ahora. Más fuerte. Claro, no, ya no. Pero siempre, cuando tengo falla, me castiga siempre. La vez pasada, uf, me he hecho. Ver a Judas. ¿Qué? Sí. ¿Judas? Judas el diablo. Pues. ¿Ah, sí? Claro. Escucha que la borrachera feo la he visto. Y así. Pero ya estoy cansado de la llevasca. Ya. No hay quien me releve. Mis hijos no quieren. ¿Quiénes los, los extranjeros? Eh, eh, los extranjeros, pues, pero aprenden pues, para su país, para pues, que se van allá. Se van. No para que me releve. Pues. A ver, maestro. ¿Está bueno? Bueno, muchas gracias, Dani. Salud, don Ignacio.
Ignacio, sì, che abbiate bisogno di che abbiate bisogno di cure, che abbiate bisogno di, di un momento di introspezione o di farvi un trip. Sì, è il primerito che ho lavorato con turisti, da eh? anni, già. Da lì arrivò un francese. Il francese ha tomato tre volte comigo. Per questo dico, i che arrivano, i toman, ven cómo cocinan y ahí ya también son ayabasqueros, ¿no? De la cosa más de eso. Y estaba metido el, el 52, 51 me di debajo del ejército, me di a la frontera de Bolivia, tras a la goma. Ha estado cuatro años metido en el monte y de ahí salí pues sabiendo esta, esta ciencia. Acá han llegado de la India, rusos, israelistas, Brasileros de acá, de, ¿cómo se llama este? Bolivia. Bolivia. Bolivia no casi, sino del país este, Uruguay, Chile. Paraguay, chilenos, de todas partes llegan por acá. Han llegado, suyo. Si más personas toman ayahuasca en el mundo, creo que el mundo se vuelve más bonito, ¿sabes? Porque, de todas maneras, las personas consumen todo tipo de drogas alrededor del mundo, pero si tomas some of them out and if you put the ayahuasca there it would be great for the rest of the world so there are two types coming one is just want to try how it's like you know the other one wants something and for me the people comes here i see the most of them has one common thing all want to change something in their life you understand and ayahuasca really can help ayahuasca i know it really can help for changing because we all uh, having you know our past and many different type of traumas we have to always deal with them in the mind no keep coming back again and again and again and again my name is osman uh, i am 43 years old i am from turkey istanbul i am here studying uh, ayahuasca i am studying with ayahuasca i was a drug addict i was uh, i use all the drugs but at the end i use Five years cocaine. I was smoking cocaine like five years, and I was having really problem because I couldn't stop it, you know. And I didn't know what to do. I was stopping like few months, and I was starting again. I was stopping like, but I was always thinking of it. It was really heavy. It's a heavy addiction. <clears throat> I mean, I didn't like the part of addiction. Also, the how affects me, you know. I was not comfortable really, but I was addict, my body wanting, you know, like, I was in that case, I was like, not wanting to uh, live anymore, I was like, I was wanting one chance more in this life, and then I came here, and I heard before, I was like, can heal with this problem, I didn't know, uh, so I need to try, you know, because it was a chance for me, I make it here, so, that's why I stay here, that long I in the first period I drink every two days like to make sure I will forget it you know I was really suffering yeah. and I tell you what when I start to drink ayahuasca regularly I never wanted to use the, the drug again you know the just I was seeing in the town the people using I never wanted to I was just turn my back and go away and then <clears throat> smoothly healed me I tell you it was very smoothly and I actually healed me in like much deeper level like they healed my problem why I was using the drug 
what makes me what what make me use the drug heal that point of it like the heal healing the root you know so i understand the whole thing so it's finished now with three years past i am here to learn to heal others because i believe in this medicine i believe in it, it can be healed i met quite a few people from peru they come here they want to drink ayahuasca but the reason was like somebody stole their bike somebody stole their money they want to see that that is interesting for me it has been always interesting because they don't come to drink ayahuasca to experience ayahuasca or they don't come for the ayahuasca because they can hear something on them but no they want to see who stole my bike <laughs> extreme peace you know you feel the peace and you feel love in your heart this is the effect I mostly receive from the ayahuasca. Again, each ceremony can be different. With each person can be really different again. And there that ayahuasca with the diet is always different again. Yo can tomé primera vez. Puch, he visto pues de lo de lo único que no ve vi en mi vida. ¿No? Y ahí he llegado a, a entender la de la ayahuasca. Desde, desde, desde tu nacimiento te hace ver desde cómo uno pasa su vida, cómo está pasando la vida, todo eso te hace ver la ayahuasca. Y ahora, cuestión de curanderismo, es otro, 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 otro cantar, ¿no? Entonces ya te enseña a cantar, las, las canciones son para curar, para llamar espíritu de los enfermos, para... para para agarrar espíritu de mujeres, para todo eso hay canciones en la ayahuasca. ¿no? La ayahuasca es una planta, se puede decir, yo lo considero que es una, es una droga, pero es al mismo tiempo que es una droga, es una planta bien poderosa. Y para, durante que yo tomo esta planta, desde el 52, He tenido una enfermedad de 30 días en cama. Desde ahí no me enfermo hasta ahorita. Y cuando me siento enfermo, tomo la ayahuasca, al otro día estoy sano. So he is uh, playing instrument for you, singing songs to make you just relaxed, you know? Don't be worried. So he takes your attention with the sound and his being. So you not, uh, your mind is uh, not going like uh, the the places it can make you scared, you understand? So, it can make you scared. I mean, if you take ayahuasca alone somewhere in never took before, you can get really scared, you know? I mean, it's very powerful. That's why you need to drink with shaman. I thought that he was complete in his, with his life. He didn't have to sing too much, but his presence in the room was really strong old man energy in there. Como esteva noche? Muy lindo. No tengo visiones exactas, pero he sentido mucho algo que decía la... ¿Cómo se llama? Yan, Yanisam, una señora colombiana, ¿Sí? que hablaba sobre la curación mediante la sexualidad y decía como el, el agua que sale del hombre es bendita uh -huh. y es algo puro y verdadero. Y me acordaba de eso y sentía como un, un cocodrilo que abre su boca gigante y recibe todo. Me gusta, sí. Bueno. ¿Y tú? ¿Para tú? Muy linda. Cada ceremonia es más intensa a veces para las personas que comienzan. Y es, según yo, porque están entrando en una conciencia sobre cómo es el trabajo con medicina. Están aprendiendo a meterse a esa parte, digamos, de esa conciencia que hay. Entonces, la medicina para mí ha sido uh, una gran bendición y creo que cada vez estoy más limpia. Yo creo en, en el karma y cosas así. Y creo que va limpiando y es cuestión de seguir sacando y botando esos bichos que no nos dejan hacer la vida como nos gustaría. I'm thinking the medicine wants to spread. It's a, 
it's a gift for humanity, that's what I think. It's for people to heal themselves, see themselves. And Western world, Europe or North America, is very much disconnected from themselves with the, let's say, worldly or earthly things. And then this, this opens the door in you, and then you go in yourself and you kind of start to discover what, who you are, what you are, what you like, where you're stuck in your life, uh, what needs to be done. It's not necessarily a magic pill, but it's open something that everybody is, or most people are blind in themselves. And Europe really, or North West world, Western world really needs this. As someone who comes from a Western society, and uh, I study heavily the sciences, so I'm, I think I have a predisposition to, um, to sort of be skeptical, I guess. Not necessarily of the drug, but just the role of the shaman. Um, and I, I had some serious doubts, um, just what it was. I thought it was just, you know, DMT is being released in my brain. The spiritual part, while I... I respect it and I, I don't like I think it's stupid or anything but I just certain I personally do not believe it um, but Don Ignacio um, I thought you know this is a tradition that's been passed down for God knows how long and um, he was the embodiment of that tradition and the ayahuasca and the ceremony have they've, they've never been separate um, and I think you know they, they've honed the ceremony to, to complement the ayahuasca experience very well we all know what is best for us, yeah. and a lot of times we don't act on those things. Mm -hmm. And I felt the ayahuasca, a lot of the advice I'd been given, a lot of those truths that you know we are told are true, and we you know we know are true. Yeah, just, you don't believe it. It's you it was one of those them. moments. We don't. <laughs> yeah, it's different, and it's interesting how it bridges that gap. It's like that is to I'm believe. unique, I yeah. think, to. At least ayahuasca for me. I mean, people have all sorts of spiritual experiences with other drugs, but nothing was so vivid in emotion, I think, than ayahuasca was. Fueron experiencias en las cuales tuve que enfrentar emocionalidad, un poco de historia del pasado. Saqué una potente lección de ello. Hubo una, primero una batalla interna de quizá un poco la soberbia mía de querer tener bajo control la situación, pero llega un momento ya no, ya no lo pude tener bajo control y decidí en ese momento eh, comenzar el viaje aparecieron imágenes de un futuro lejano en el tiempo. O sea, esa humanidad era holográfica. Eh, las personas eran inteligencia artificial. Me, me observaban y, co y comentaban entre ellos. Como bien geométrica en el rostro. Me llegó la certeza de que eso, esas personas eran muy poderosas. Llegué a un límite donde no pude seguir cruzando. Era así como una cúpula, algo como lo más puro, lo más sagrado. Seguía transpirando, seguía llorando. Aparecía un número muy fijo, que era el número 49. Esa era la edad en que yo iba a fallecer. Esos son cinco años más. ¿Mm? Tengo 40 y voy a cumplir 45. No había mucho sentido de venir, de no volver. Era muy fuerte todo lo que había visto. Una humanidad que ya no era humanidad. Mi familia que fallecía pronto. Luego mi muerte. Aparecen unas imágenes en las cuales me veo yo como consolando a las personas que quedaban de la muerte de mi familia tenía que volver y ahí se desató una lucha enorme de fuerza, de fuerza espiritual más bien dicho, de energía. Todas las formas de cómo evacuamos nosotros las toxinas del cuerpo yo las ocupé. Cada vez que yo expulsaba a través del vómito sentía que algo 
oscuro salía de mí. La ayahuasca se había como adueñado de mi, de todo mi sistema nervioso central y me dirigía al frente, ahí a la casa de don Ignacio. Cuando lo vi, la imagen también fue muy potente, ver a don Ignacio con unas pinturas así como de guerrero. Le dije que necesitaba su ayuda y él me dijo, tranquilo, te voy a ayudar, tranquilo. Así que él me insufló también tabaco en la parte de la cabeza y bastó eso para que volviera así como cierta tranquilidad. Posteriormente sentí que me ayudó en, en mi vida cotidiana. Which constantly comes from within. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Allah. Ya Pura mano de espíritu, bendita planta, bendita eres entre todas las plantas. Yo he venido acá a Santa Rosa de Dinamarca a poner una pausa a mi vida. Se lo recomiendo a la gente adulta sobre todo, porque están más preparados para para encontrarse con, con, un, con una medicina como esta, que es muy fuerte, muy, muy fuerte. Pero llega un momento, a los 50 años, que todo es rutina, trabajo, dinero, éxitos, y al final te vas a morir y no has, no has logrado en realidad el objetivo de aquí uno viene aquí a la vida. Y, y este es el lugar que me está enseñando eso con la ayuda del maestro Antonio, que es un curandero nativo de acá, que sin conocimiento, sin universidad, sin colegio, eh, llega a tu espíritu, tu alma, tu esencia, que no lo hace ningún médico alópata en ninguna parte del mundo, ningún psicólogo, ningún psiquiatra. Eh, y eso me ha impresionado mucho, muchísimo. Siempre, siempre uno mira, ah, eres doctor, honoris causa, y, psiquiatría, pero te da una pastilla y listo, y sigue, sigue igual de enfermo. Tiene nombre de Chacruna, pero no, no es legítimo. Claro. Este es el legítimo Chacruna. Ay, yo conozco varios. ¿Cómo explicarse este, este planta yo? Y pues le he conocido esa planta para eh, lo que es así, ¿no? ¿Quién pues sabe? ¿Quién, quién ha sabido? Cuando hay harto ayahuasca, tiene que poner más harto que ayahuasca el chacruna, para que puede ser más fuerte, más visión. Entonces ahí sí, el mundo de la planta te hace a elevar. Hay muchas maldades en este mundo que con la estación de, de la planta te avisa. Planta de medicina, ayahuasca son lo que te, lo que te da vida. Lo que te da fuerza, poder, poder de sanación. Así manejaba antiguamente mis abuelos, mis trasabuelos. De eso vivía ellos. 
haciendo tratamiento de parte de, de tomando la medicina. Entonces ellos de dejar de ver qué enfermedad, qué, 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 qué planta le vamos a aplicar. Entonces con esa preparación de la planta hacía curación el sanábalo. Muy sagrado. Hoy noche le vas a dar eso, otra vez, último. fermentado un poco. Salud.
，哎，老高高兴，没得高，老高高兴，没得高，没得谁能干了我，那么有的算了嘛，干了嘛又干了，干谁嘛又干嘛，总不完就，总是嘛干了多，嗯，多哟。这看我为什么得呀？一代干了干，看我各种干了不，各种嘛是地位不，老二老二关心，要啥啥，也不干了呀，干了，嗯，那得干了，阿爸，那那得干了，那那高不完，没得高，那高干了，别为干，嘛干嘛就完。ดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีกันดีก
Seguir noche otra vez nuevamente. ¡Tú! Chacara. Por allá otro vaya, por aquí otro vaya, por aquí otro vaya, por allá otro vaya. ¡Fu! Chala gritería. ¡Pu! ¡Chayú ahí! ¡Pu! ¡Chayú! ¿Qué hacer? ¡Fu! Ya ni siquiera puede cantar ya. ¡Oh! Ya nos termina acá el diablo, le decía yo. ¡Fu! ¡Chae! ¡Cara! Mejor a la mañana. ¡Vamos! Regresar. Así es. Yo, Antonio Vázquez, Galarreta. El nombre es Ipivo Virisui. My name is Robert Tay. I'm 48. I'm British and I am a trained medical anthropologist. When I was uh, 19, I read that the Native American Indians, when they were tired, would actually go to a tree and lean against it and, and basically receive the energy of the tree. And I was open minded enough to try this one evening. And I went to a big oak in a, in a, in a park in England and um, basically approached it and was respectful and asked for permission to receive its energy and uh, and I got it. It was a huge wave that came over me and it was extraordinarily clean um, and it was powerful and but contained within that energy was also this sense of an awareness that I became aware that it was aware that I was aware. And that was kind of mind-blowing. They think in their own way, they process information, they respond in real time, they are incredibly adaptive to the environment. So there's definitely an intelligence there. Now, <coughs> part, of their, part of their being is a being that is not visible because of our uh, perceptual uh, filters, we won't be able to see them and yet they're still there. In the same way, if you go back in time and you think about um, the, the medical practices of a few hundred years ago, uh, just because they didn't have the paradigm of bacteria and viruses didn't mean that those small little invisible things didn't exist. They still existed then, but we needed to shift our paradigms away from leeches and humors and things like that to be able to perceive them. If you think about it, they work with light. They know how to transform light. They know how to transform light and that energy into food. So that's a pretty neat evolutionary trick to uh, embrace this, especially someone who's a hyper-rationalist, because it just doesn't really make any sense. It sounds like mumbo-jumbo. But when you experience uh, these plants working within your body, working with intelligence, actually being able to see very clearly what ails you and to remove that, then it kind of humbles you. Uh, it humbles me, it humbles most people, and uh, the experience is what vali vali validifies uh, a new paradigm shift. Hay muchos personas que dicen el este el 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 ayahuasca son droga. Ayahuasca no es droga. El droga es al simplemente aquí en el Perú viene a drogados. Lo que toma lo que toma en la medicina ayahuasca son fuerte. Entonces al drogado cuando se toma se viene a complicarse ahí muere los gente. Y curadas, personas que había tenido sida, un colombiano. Un colombiano de 22 años que había venido acá. Ya estaba muriendo. Hay plantas para, especialmente para, para barrer los, los virus. Preparaba eso, le convidaba. Pero hay que sufrir, porque planta es fuerte. Some people come. Um, looking to check off the list of substances that they've done uh, and they treat it like a drug and I'm not sure if they're going to have the most positive experiences uh, because this by no means is a drug. What determines uh, cl the classification of a drug is really the set setting and this is conducted in a ceremonial setting and, and with people who know what they're doing, with people who are trained in a medical tradition. If people are coming here for highs or uh, you know, ecstatic experiences, they may be very seriously abused, disabused of that uh, expectation because it can, it's grueling and it can be brutal and it can be difficult and challenging and uh, it's really work, it's really deep cleansing of the spirit. Todos mi familia me era médico. Él me mandaba a traer, traerme esto jolano, me iba a traer, ya prepara así, entonces yo le preparaba. Si en dieta no te sirve para nada. Hay muchas personas que, que si en dieta toman nomás ayahuasca, yo soy médico. No. Los buenos, los malos se encuentran. Sí. Hay los, los médicos brujos. Um, they're basically charlatans. And it's very difficult sometimes to distinguish who is of quality and who isn't. Um, a real 
curandero, a real healer, a real shaman in this tradition, is somebody who spent a lot of time training with the plants. It isn't that they just decide to, to knock up a brew, you know, over eight hours and then give it to somebody and then sing a couple of songs. It's much more detailed than that. It's a real, uh, a real arduous training that goes into this practice. Part of that training uh, is called dieting with the plants, where you imbibe um, a mixture of a specific plant with tobacco and you then spend um, a period of time from eight days to a month to six months not taking in any salt, any sugar, not having sexual relationships and often spending time in isolation. Now that's a very arduous training uh, because you're eating the most bland, the blandest of foods and all in all the, the whole uh, objective of this is to get connection to the plants, um, a gift exchange. You are sacrificing pleasures of the senses for and, and um, demonstrating the metal of your spirit. Piensa que todo, todos y pibos somos ayahuasqueros. No, no es eso. Traguero sí, eso sí. Traguero sí. Si tú te vas a ir por la calle, vete a ver cómo está ahorita. Eso sí, eso sí hay de todo. Ayahuasquero, muy poco, pero hay. Uh, well, the most powerful vision I've ever had is, is really looking into the heart of creation, into the very, very, the very, very eyes of, of the divine, if you like, into the fabric of that. It's not a human figure by any means, but there's a there's a incredible complexity and intelligence there, and uh, that's a knowing that no one can ever take away. Because you will change, you will become a different person doing this, and uh, you will leave aside a lot of the illusions that uh, previously you were wrapped up in. You will start becoming stronger and stronger as a person, you know. So, uh, it's not for the faint-hearted. It's definitely something that uh, you have to want to do. Porque ayahuasca es mi Dios de mí. Me da fuerza, me da poder, me da vida. Me gustaría ayudar con mucho cariño, con mucho amor hacia lo que vienen los enfermos con todo mi corazón. Me gustaría ayudar para garantizar mi trabajo y para garantizar las plantas medicinales curativas. ¿Sí? Porque Madre Ayahuasca es una mujer también, entonces conecta con la mujer. También enseña al hombre, pero poco a poco va enseñando. Este son unión a las plantas maestras, maestras de marusa, de pión, de toé, de este chirizanango, de tabaco. Entonces, esta es una unión que da fuerza para poder nosotros curar al enfermo. Es sus visiones y sus ícaros son este de acá. Este modelo de diseño ícaro significa de sanación desde el corazón y de las plantas maestras que es el ayahuasca. Este es espiritualmente, como acaba de decir, cantamos el ícaro hacia conexión al persona, entrando en su cuerpo interior y vemos que lo que tiene, dejamos su cuerpo así, a un enfermo. De edad de 22 años empezado He graduado edad de 35 años. Mi graduación fue donde que a un enfermo llamó o un doctor llamó donde que eh, el alumno o la alumno tiene que sanar. Que ayahuasca no es para eso, solamente es para conectarse y para ver para las curaciones de cáncer, de sida de otras enfermedades, entonces hay otras plantas que podemos dar. Es como una clínica que interna. Ahora, cuando vienen a practicar solamente para ayahuasca, son puras ayahuasca. Maestra Estela, yo tengo así nomás esta cantidad. Entonces, yo, ok, te voy a ayudar. ¿Por qué? Porque ellos vienen en busca de sanaciones. No como que de otros centros que cobran muy caro en dólares, pero yo no cobraría en dólares. Entonces, más amor al trabajo y más ayudar 
a lo que viene para que regrese en su país tranquilo, sano. Juan. Juan, mira, quiero con... Buenos días. Quiero confirmar que tú vas a pagarme por ser cantidad mañana, porque no tengo un sol. Tengo 10 soles, yo. ¿Vas a pagarme mañana? You know, we're like moths to each other's flames, to each other's magic. Um, the indigenous that I meet and work with, uh, all the ayahuasqueros and the curanderos, they've gone. There are none. They use it just as a parasite cleaner, right. basically. Exactly. Uh, nothing else in in weak doses, not very strong doses. Right. Yeah, um, because the world that that gives you, as far as they're concerned, has no value anymore. They see the the, the multi dimensions. They see things in terms of scales and the harmony of of life. You know the kind of things that you might reconnect to through ayahuasca. So why would they need to do ayahuasca when they're already connected in that no, way? That's absolutely you know? true. First descriptions of of shaman were of jugglers, they were tricksters. There are no really good shaman in Iquitos because any really good shaman probably just wouldn't want to be in Iquitos. Pavlovian relationship between the two yeah. may of course not have any basis in reality. Exactly. You know, if you bring the bell and then you give the dog a piece of meat, mm -hmm. you know, the dog makes that relationship. If you have an amazing experience right. and this amazing spirit shows you so much about what, who you are and what's going on and what you should and shouldn't do, then you might attribute that to the guy in the room who has the little raffle, right, right. you know? And people normally do. Association. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're men with medicine, they're not medicine men per se. The Western world has alienated itself to itself and it's now calling, screaming right. to become whole again and it's the most destructive thing I could ever possibly describe it's just hideous it's a business everything is a business every single thing and the the exploitation and misery on the planet is greater now than it ever was and that's never that's it's greater now than it was at any other time in history it's but the money that's corrupted the system you know the system isn't for me isn't necessarily inherently evil um, it, you, you could look at it that way but really the money is what really has corrupted the system. The thing is, is that each part, each person and each interest has an interest in a part of that cog. Yeah. So you wake up in the morning and let's say you work for any part of that machine. Yeah. You have an interest in the whole machine functioning. Right. Because if, you're, if the whole machine doesn't function, your little cog, you're not going to get anything. Exactly. You're not going to eat. Yeah. Which means that that's every single person is like in the cog as what Bob Dylan says, um, do what they do just to be nothing more than something they invest in. Right. That's what we're all doing. It should sustainably work, but then to the extent to which sustainability is used to create artificial scarcity to sell more shit, you know, that's the problem I have where it's not, right. you know, it's manipulated, the, you know, the green movement's manipulated, right? And it's really a true integration, a true objective analysis of how can we fully integrate. Right what we've learned and what we know. Like in the 1950s when you saw those commercials, I don't know if you've seen them, you know, what will it be like in the future in 1980? Right. You know, we will work one day a week. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all of our labor saving devices will be working for, for us, us, you know, <laughs> showing a complete and total lack of understanding of yeah. the capitalist system and <laughs> process and the whole process of how that was going to occur. Yeah. You know, we have more machines Daily, we have more machines everywhere, and we work harder for less. That's right. the, the, the great modern dream. The only thing that capitalism hasn't thought of yet is how to sell to a human being who has no job because they were taken, the, the, the job was taken by a machine, which means you'd have to create machines as consumers so that they can consume the, the objects that the machines make. But it's an illusion. None of it's true. It's all ultimately a, a system that has, that feeds itself through its own self-interest 
and has an interest in describing uh, its own falsehoods. People are uh, willing to expand their consciousness. Uh, we we welcome you to come to a safe place to do it, and uh, to advance as a human species. You know we're we're almost running ourselves off a cliff, and we know it, but. If we leave it to the authorities, they're not doing anything about it. And the, we're toxic. We're not only toxic from chemicals that are being sprayed everywhere, we're physically toxic, we're emotionally toxic, we're mentally toxic and spiritually toxic. And there's this one little realm of shamanism, and I don't know if it's because of this place, Iquitos, it's the largest city in the world not accessed by road. It's been, I won't say it's the true, true tradition, but something has been preserved here. Give me your right hand. Flip it. Ella está regularmente afectando el sistema nervioso. Tiene problemas de sentimientos, emociones, el bloqueo que no se mueve. ¿sí? El bloqueo fuerte tiene aquí, aquí, aquí está conectado acá fuerte, o sea, golpeado. Corazón. Corazón, ahí, bloqueado esta zona. Y acá esta zona, sí. This is a spiritual energetic block, like on the right side of your head, and it goes down through the, or the left That's side, it. all the way down through the left side, because you get a really strong block here. Yeah, I feel that right there. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel much, but I feel that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. eh, su corazón tiene un tanto de luz, pero esa luz está luchando. Debería ser el, el ajos. Y después, y tabaco. Y él dice que hay que hacer el mayo garlic y luego de eso, tabaco. El tabaco dice que le senta su energía, su mente. Sí, él dice que el ajo macho va a preparar el cuerpo y luego el tabaco va a centralizar todo y luego calmar la mente. There's nothing to be afraid of. Well, it's up to you. We can't make you do it. And if you don't want to do it, that's fine too. But Quiere promesa que funciona. Cien por ciento, sí. I started the rock and roll life in the 80s. Yeah, I um, went on tour with the Grateful Dead for many, many years, and that's a, a lot of drugs, part of the landscape. And went to a lot of concerts. It didn't start out with a lot of drugs. It just became a way, a way of life 
using them, selling them, traveling, um, getting in a lot of trouble. Ayahuasca saved my life. And that's hard to say because I don't like it, but it did and it has. How it clears you out, how it knows where to go, where to work on you, I don't know. How it knows to be gentle with me and you know, not rock my world. Like I said, I don't get visions. I don't have any type of hallucinations. I've never seen anything on ayahuasca that I have not seen with my own eyes when I wasn't on ayahuasca. It's just a real hard look at, at myself. And for me, um, it's it was just really simple what I needed to learn, probably something that I didn't learn as a child. I needed to be with myself, how to be with myself and love myself because obviously you know it's real easy to say but drug addiction there's something in me that is driving me not to love myself and ayahuasca just says just love yourself this is real it's so simple i've been to at least 40 or 50 detoxes and nothing has done anything like basically my little one month of i think i drank eight times last year and even though when i went home even even when I came back this year, people noticed that, I, that the change that I had last year was still with me, even in spite of the, the using and, the, and the, the polluting I was doing to my body. But even if they just drank ayahuasca one time, they would find something out about themselves, their connection to other people, the connection to living things, just whatever their connection is, they would they would they would get it. Todo el mundo están confundidos cuando hablan del espíritu, no, pero el espíritu es real. Anywhere in the world where there were so-called primitive peoples, they asked them where their consciousness was and they made a reference to the heart. The human species has cut the connection to the heart. We need to reconnect the heart and the head and use the head as a tool because if the head the mind is running everything, we just tend to get in trouble because we put logic and re reason behind anything we do. I'm Slocum David Hewson. I uh, was born in the United States in 1966 and have now created a holistic healing center and uh, a sustainable community. I said, yep, you've got cancer right here. He said, but it's not physical, it's a spiritual realm. There's an energy that has latched on to you. So I said, okay, he saw exactly what I saw, but it wasn't exactly what I thought it was. What can I do? And he said, you need to, to plant diet a tree. And so I did, went through the process of dyeing this tree and actually saw this energy come off me, and it healed me. And then I went on to the next diet, the next diet. Before I knew it, I was in a proper shamanic initiation. The Peruvians had this tendency to go into, to do a diet, but after diet, it was so difficult for them. They, they go back and drink beer, eat pork, and go back to having sex. Most of the people that train with them are Westerners. And he said, they're the ones that can actually go through these difficult moments and then respect and withstand the post-diet. Well, I, I've researched psychedelics in, in a therapeutic context. And I'm doing my dissertation work on MDMA for trauma, for PTSD. And um, so I'm interested in the lived experience of that therapy. So what what is the process of transformation that participants go through in therapy? How, in, in a sense, what is the experience of heart opening? I had some great ayahuasca experiences, then I came here and they, they have black ayahuasca. And so it's, it's very strong and it has a tendency to, to take you down into a dark place in the unconscious and, and show you or bring up and out what you're maybe not aware of and what you haven't worked with. I was just split open and I didn't have the tools that I needed to deal with life when it came along and it hurt me. However insignificant something may be, I, I, I perceived the pain 
and I went for what I knew would make me feel better, and that was using drugs. We try to find God in, you know, really all the wrong places. If you give them the option of the unknown, they're probably going to stick with doing what's going to destroy them than step into the unknown. It just totally busted open the illusions. You could call it the apocalypse in Christianity, but the word apocalypse in Greek, it just means the lifting of the veil. You can see things for what they are as opposed to what you think they are, what you feel they are. It, you just see it for what it is without having to attach an emotional or a mental label to it. And when you look at these big psychedelic festivals and people that aren't integrating their experience, a lot of times they just take the beautiful from it and don't integrate the difficult stuff. And so this tends to lead to like a spiritual materialism, sort of like uh, everything is everything's beautiful, everything is good, it's all love. And that ends up being quite superficial, in my opinion. Like a an immature um, understanding of the teachings. All this black magic that they're perhaps projecting, and I think there, there, there could be real vibrational energies or entities or whatever you want to call them, but I think they get manifest through those people's unconscious. So there could be a lot of darkness that they're projecting out and not owning in their life no matter what they seem like, because a lot of times when you're projecting it, you might seem, I mean, this is what I've been working on, um, accepting my darkness, and I'm this real nice, polite guy, and then it really shocked me when I shit everywhere during session and took all my clothes off and ran around, and um, there's, there's just a lot that we're not aware of about ourselves. Are you afraid of death? Death. Well, I've had many deaths, and the actual fear of death um, I've experienced. And the funny thing was, at the moment when I accepted death was when the most beautiful moments came through. You're just gearing people to already have the direct connection with the divine, no middlemen, and we're preparing ourselves to go directly to the divine so we won't come back. From a philosophical standpoint, you could go, well, wait a minute, if you fear death, then you culturally create something that, well, while I'm alive, I'm going to get what I want. And if you have a bunch of people together in a matrix of fear, and they're going to get what they can while they're alive, then they're not considering future generations of people and they're actually, what they're doing is destroying the very thing that provides for them. I mean, everything we nurture ourselves with comes from our metaphorical mother, the Mother Earth. We have Father Cosmos, Mother Earth, and that union, we are children of that union. And this is the mystic um, trinity and we've lost connection with the earth, we've lost connection with the cosmos, and in this realm we can actually connect back to the earth, ground ourselves, but we can also shoot up into the cosmos. La muerte no es para tener miedo, es un pacto eterno que nadie puede romper ese pacto entre el bien y el mal. Es un pacto Entonces, si la muerte llegara a nosotros, no tengamos por qué preocuparse, porque no es nuestro. Eh, lo que sí debemos preocuparnos, todos los seres vivos, humanos, es liberar el espíritu. Liberado el espíritu, todos tienen la conexión con ese poder que llaman Dios o naturaleza. Am I afraid of death? Well, that's of course the best question to ask on any um, documentary by Ayahuasca. I hope that I'm able to embrace it fully and completely and enjoy it. Ayahuasca has helped confirm to me that there is a lot more than this temporal existence. And 
Uh, so with that, um, it gives me a sense of security, strength, uh, a sense of wisdom, a sense of uh, guidance that I use in my life that um, allows me to be free. Uh, the Tibetan Book of the Dead has all of these specific levels. You choose and come with the karma you have right. to process what you're carrying and, you, and as unresolved energetic issues. I don't believe that any belief system intellectually held has any effect. It's just the emotional, spiritual state of the person in, um, in the deepest aspects because there's a... Um, program that is functioning that means you have to pass because that if that vibrational energy is exactly perfect then you have to pass because you're in the system of karma yeah. um, and of course for them they want to pass to the point where they don't have to actually enter a womb door yo en la muerte no tengo miedo ¿por qué? porque yo tranquilamente estoy bien Si el muerte elige, no tengo miedo al muerte. The visions opened up and the medicine basically said, let me show you what happens when you die. That was my very first experience. And it showed me a level of consciousness that was unbelievable, you know, freed from the constraints of the human body, uh, a consciousness that was wider than the open sky. And it really removed my uh, fear, my, my conscious fear of death, my cognitive fear of death. Uh, from that moment on, I was so astounded by what I saw, and I realized then that the Tibetans know what they're talking about. They really seriously know about consciousness of death and transmigration of spirit. They really know about all, all these things, and uh, this was such a profound experience that that's what decided for me to continue in this path and commit to it. And uh, uh, I hadn't until that point met anything that powerful, and I since I haven't met anything more powerful than this. You know, it's it's the real thing. So, um, uh, in a nutshell, no, I'm not afraid of death. Um, I, I don't want it to happen before time necessarily, like anybody else. But uh, it's it's just a transition. If you understand it as a process of life and as a process in a chain of being, then you understand that it's actually uh, your spirit. It's what is eternal, and what stands outside of time. So there's nothing to fear. You know, you don't you don't you don't have a crisis when you take your jacket off. Uh, it's the same thing. <laughs> well, at least I don't have a crisis. Aquí los extranjeros mucho ha llorado porque pensaba que va a morir, claro. Pero en la planta aplica. ¿Quién va a querer morir? Nadie no quiere morir. Mi yo no quiero morir. Pero algún día nos, nos vamos a morir. Llegará el momento que vamos a morir cada uno de nosotros. Queremos estar todavía en este mundo. Nadie sabe si es mejor, si mejor es el otro lado o no es mejor. ¿Hay trago o no hay trago? <laughs> if I am afraid of dying, I mean, why I should be afraid of dying? I am, I believe, I, I work for God, you know, I believe in God. And uh, I believe I am doing something good, you know. If I die today, yeah, I die, you know. La muerte será, va a venir a llevarme Jesucristo, me va a avisar. No, cualquiera no me va a llevar. Ay, ay. Muy bien. ¿Usted qué opina? ¿Le ha enseñado alguna vez la ayahuasca de qué hay después de la muerte? Después es? de la muerte. Ajá. Uno vaga. Uno vaguea por el mundo. Man vaguea por el mundo. Sí. Acá, dicen, los curas dicen, los católicos, religiosos, que dice que vamos al cielo. No hay cielo. Para mí no hay cielo. Tuve la mamá de mis hijos un año. No, un año justo. No, un año y un mes me acompañó. Y al año y un mes me dijo que ella se iba y se te no sabía dónde. Por eso digo que no hay cielo. Eres siempre puro, eres verdadero. Y el sueño del mundo no te tocará. Deja los apegos, deja la confusión, vive en la verdad más allá de la ilusión. You are forever pure, you are forever true.
and the dream of this world can never touch you. So give up your